Let's talk about conservation of momentum in collisions. Here I have two carts and some very nice wheels that uh, give off very little friction. So consider this a frictionless system. I'll send this cart in. It has a mass, some mass m, and I'm going to send it in with a speed v. It's this guy. This guy comes to a stop. This guy goes out with that same speed v. Does that make sense? Well, let's check. Momentum must be conserved. Conservation of momentum means if you add up all the momentum before the collision, that equals the addition of all the momentum after the collision. This is just the sum sign. It just means add them up. So initially, I have two objects. Always good to draw a picture. This guy's going in with some speed v, has some mass m. This guy's just sitting here. So this is the initial situation. The final situation, well, now, this guy's just sitting here, and this other guy goes out with definitely what appeared to be the same speed that this guy came in at. Now let's check our momentum conservation. We have mv plus zero. We'll make this the positive direction. Equals zero plus mv. Excellent. Momentum's conserved. Now, let's give the guy who's just sitting here initially three times the mass. Each one of these blocks has the same mass as this guy. So this guy has three times the mass. I'll send this guy in with some speed v, and we'll see what happens. They both go out at about the same speed. So let's take this situation. And let's erase the, this stuff here and draw our new pictures. So now, this guy's coming in, and let's call it 2v. He's definitely going faster than what they were going out at, some mass m. And he hits this guy that has three times the mass. Speed is zero initially. And then after the collision, this guy is going here with some speed v. Note, he's going in the negative direction now. It's the positive direction. This guy, with three times the mass, goes outwards with some speed v. Let's see if momentum is conserved. Well, if we add up all the momentum before the collision, we have mass times two times the speed plus zero, because that guy is not moving. And then after the collision, we have this guy, m, but now with a negative v, because it's going in the other direction. And then plus this guy, which is three times the mass, times speed v. So here we get a 2mv, and here we get a minus mv plus a 3mv, which is equal to 2mv. Excellent. Momentum is conserved. Let's try one more type of collision here. And in this collision, we'll have them stick together. I'll give them equal masses. Oh, let's turn it around. So I will attempt to send them in at the same speed. And if I'm successful, they should just come to a stop. And they do. And that's because when we conserve momentum here, and I'll do it down here at the bottom of the board, the initial momentum equals the addition of the final momentum. Well, initially, we had one guy going this way and the other guy going the other way. In the final situation, nobody's moving, so the momentum is zero. And sure enough, mv plus minus mv is also zero. Excellent. Momentum is conserved. This last type of collision is called a completely inelastic collision. And let me go through these different types of collisions, because it's very important. Elastic collisions are defined by, in the collision, not only is momentum conserved, momentum is always conserved in the collision, but also kinetic energy is conserved. This is actually only true 
in particle collisions. So if you're a particle physicist, you deal with a lot of elastic collisions. Now, particles. Now, in reality, pool balls do lose a little bit of kinetic energy. I mean, you hear a sound. Where'd that sound come from? Well, it came from some of the initial kinetic energy, but very little is lost. So in pools, pool tables, it's approximately elastic collisions. In elastic collisions, only momentum is conserved, kinetic energy is not conserved, and if they stick together, well, that's a certain type of inelastic collision, and that's called completely inelastic. 